Hi guys, and I think this topic deserved another video. And it's the Spedex IS-30 4-in-1 ESC controversy. And what do I mean by controversy? Well, some people are saying, no, I've been using this for many years and it's just good. It's great and it's awesome. And then I get the other people that say it's a piece of shit also, but not to that extent. However, my reaction was that it's out of the box. It's a piece of crap. I've seen a lot better and you can get a lot better for the same price. And that was the whole idea here. And that was the whole, that's, that's what my channel is about. So some people say this, these tests are irrelevant. The data is bullshit. You know, all kinds of crazy things. That's totally fine. You know, you have your opinion, say what you want to say. These are the results I got and that's fine. Now, let's talk a little bit about this ESC real quick. So some of the people here that said stuff like this, don't go on and telling us what their setup is. And, you know, I'm not going to go and reply to every single one of them. So, you know, if I put this ESC with a 20, if I started testing everything with a rate, like for example, race star 2205 motor, yeah, you know, everything's going to look good. But when you're going to stick, you know, some people are going to be sticking some brother hobby R6 2306 2450 KV, like I do on 4 and one ESC tests. Emax 2306, Emax even the 2205, 2600 KV. Those are pretty freaking massive, huge uh, torque and um, very noisy magnets or just a very noisy motor. So I test for worst case scenario. That's one thing. You know, if I go ahead and stick this with a 1507 motor, it'd probably perform as good, almost as good as a Tico 32. Oh, and bringing up the Tico 32. Some people are like, you are saying it's the holy grail of all ESCs. Well, it, from testing, that's what it seems like. And that's all I could say. And I've used them and they sound beautiful. And a lot of, pe a lot of people would agree with me. If you've ever transitioned from a shitty ESC or just an average ESC to a Tico 32 ESC and you just listen to your motors, you will be amazed. It's like adding a silencer to your motors. No joke. And many people will back that up because it's true. It's 100% true. Now, some people say, well, some people connected those and they burnt right away. Well, have you seen how those people build quadcopters? I've seen my fair share of people, new people, that just don't have the experience to build one as clean just yet. They get a Tico 32, they bridge every single pad on the flight controller. What do you expect? I don't know, you tell me. Or they bridge all three motors together. And, uh, or maybe they didn't notice it, that one wire was sticking from a motor and touched the second phase. And next thing you know, that whole ESC and the motor burned or one or the other burned. So there's many, many, many variables that go on into building a quadcopter and, you know, trying out components. Um, I myself have never received, ever received a broken ESC out of every single ESC I've ever gotten. None were ever faulty out of the box, ever. I've burnt my fair share, and the way I burnt it was totally my fault. One, I burnt the ESC through short-circuiting it. How? Well, all I had to do was the three motor phase wires, once the propeller went on, I didn't put any you know, heat shrink, and I had some solder hanging down a little bit off that ESC. Once the air pushed that ESC down to the carbon frame, all three phases touched, boom. Smoked the motor, and I think the ESC smoked as well. I haven't even checked that quad back up again. So, things to burn is usually, like, I would say 98% is the builder's fault. Whether intentional or unintentional, or just the, you know, the lack of experience, or just an accident. Accidents do happen. I burned a flight controller the other day trying to... Uh, what is it bind my receiver because I was too lazy to take it apart and I was using a screwdriver I touched the flight controller. I burnt that shit and it was a Dell RC and a Dell RC FC It was the ultimate v2 build. Yeah, that's what happened to me and I replaced it and now I have it and we're gonna be doing a Diagnosis or a debug video and trying to fix that flight controller. So it's good to it give It's gonna give me content now back to this ESC. Yes, it could be good. I didn't say it could be absolute shit, but out of the box, it's a piece of shit. And I'll, 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 I stand by that 100%. <clears throat> out of all the testing, I stand by this, that out of the box, it's a piece of shit. Now, if you look down here, I only use a 200 microfarad Lewis R capacitor. I only use the 1000 and the 300. I use the 470. So these people did have some issues. And especially nowadays. Now, you know what? What I'm also going to do is I'm going to pick up another Spedex IS-34-1 ESC. Okay, just to double check if I maybe I got a crappy one. 
And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to take the exact setup with the Emacs, or not Emacs, Brother Hobby 2306 R6 motors and the ESC. And I'm going to stick it on an old Matek F405 with a super sensitive gyro and a 9 volt regulator on board. No capacitor. No low ESR capacitor. And I'm going to go fly it. And if I can't fly it, and if I even see noise through that 9 volt regulator that's on that board, then what can I say? I mean, there's, there's only going to be two possibilities. Okay, one is you're using very smooth, weak motors. Maybe I highly doubt it because he said he's, a, he's you know, top, some of the top pilots and he, he's maybe a racer. I don't know. Um, so maybe that's one thing. Another thing, maybe they're using just F3 flight controller or, or this is very important, SpedEx went cheap on some of the hardware. And I got like a V2 or a V3. Now, I'll never know because I don't have the older version and I can't really zoom in and take a picture of the MOSFETs and test all the old capacitors. So I can't check that. But at currently, if anyone were to purchase it like I did recently, this is what is to be expected throughout your system. And again, I might have a dud of an ESC as he claimed here and I will go ahead and pick up another one and I will revisit this. Now, I really wanted to make this video because um, I think some people don't want, I'm pretty sure not everybody watches every video and thus miss some information that I say in previous videos. And sometimes I forget to always say it in the well, upcoming videos, which is I test worst case scenarios. I use very noisy motors and to give us a clear representation. Now, there is many directions this comment, this controversy can go. It can go that your tests are absolutely shit and irrelevant because it's a static test. I do have a rig that I'm working on, which will allow it to be non-static, which means it'll actually be floating in the same position. That needs time and it needs a couple months. But at the current moment of time, these tests have never failed me. And uh, this is why I keep doing them. If I found them useless, I wouldn't do them. So, back to my topic. Um, let's see. Everyone was just dying of the clickbait. Well, I, I didn't know what the hell. I was surprised. Like, oh my god, no way this is true. But I didn't see what was true. It was, it was terrible. And I let you know in the beginning of the video. So, if you didn't like it, you could just click away. Or if you figured out all the information you want, you can just go bye-bye. It's, it's not that big of a deal. Now, you know... I still believe I'm not saying it's a it's uh, it's you can't fix this ESC. You could totally add shitload of capacitors. You'll be totally fine. Use low low noise motors. You'll be totally fine. But overall, out of the box, you can get better. That's that's what I was trying to get at. Maybe I was a little bit more emotional or just it was just funny. I'd never seen someone perform so bad before. So I thought it was funny and I just wanted to capture the emotion that I was feeling and portray it to you guys. But some people got really butthurt, like really butthurt. Um, this is not the first time. It happened to me with the Fat Shark HDOs. I lost a couple subscribers. I lost maybe like 50 subs that day. <laughs> and... And, you know, a week or two weeks later, all these issues started to come out with the Fat Shark. And now I don't hate Fat Shark. I'm a, I love Fat Shark. But, yeah. And to be honest, I just recently noticed my Samsung S6 Plus has, you know, you know, I have um, the burning issue with the OLED on the screen, which is uh, not very good. Even on a smartphone, this shit happens. It's pretty expensive. It was pretty expensive. And so I've had it for like only maybe a year and a half now. So, yeah. But the screen's always on, and there's a lot of variables, blah, 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 blah. But anyways, you know, uh, this, I believe, is a very controversial topic, and a lot of people love SPEDEX. Now, don't think I'm against SPEDEX. I just tested the IS-30, okay? Not the foreign one, the single version. Absolutely phenomenal. I was going to release that video before this video, but then I decided, no, I'll release this video, and then I'll release that video. So, I don't know when it will be released. I don't know when this video will be released. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow. I don't know what today is, and I don't know what tomorrow is. But overall, um, you guys are pretty funny, and um, it's it's just awesome. I mean, you know, these are the tests. These are test results. You could take them. You could hate them. You could love them. You can use them, but they do provide good information. And uh, the reason why I started doing this is because I had issues in the past, and nobody was doing this, and I had to get down to it. I've never used an oscilloscope before in my life, but I've always wanted one, and I always had an idea of how to use one. And uh, I said, this was the point where I actually decided to get oscilloscopes and get into this. And then I built up a setup and I've just been updating it and upgrading it. And 
uh, figuring out the best possibility to test these things. And it does not give us the ultimate truth, but it gives us a very, very good educated guess on what to buy. And that's the whole idea. And it can give us also a very well educated guess on what could be the problem that you're facing. Because some said mid throttle oscillations. What is mid throttle oscillations? Well, you could, this is this is around the mid throttle area right there. So this is where the oscillations would go. This would go into your gyro and make it like it's on crack, basically. Just start twitching like crazy. So, yeah, what I'm going to do with this ESC, like I said, I'm going to purchase another one. I'm going to retest it. And to be honest, I've tested it 20 more times today. And I've even gotten worse results. So this is what we could say the average result. Let's leave it at that. So I've even gotten worse. And, you know, if I start showing that, you're going to be like... I don't, I don't know what the hell people are thinking anyways um these didn't test very well maybe i got a bad one i'm gonna go ahead and get another one i'll even write spedex for you guys and i will update you on what the response is and um they don't provide low esr for capacitor with it for nothing by the way just just to clear that up so we're going to test this with low esr capacitors i'm also going to get another one and i'm going to go ahead and put this into a matic f405 sensitive gyro flight controller with the Brother Hobby R6 2306 2450kV motors. And uh, if that thing just twitches like it's on crack, then it's, it's never going to fly. Then obviously, you know, that's 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 the way for me to test a 4-in-1 ESC or any ESC. Is to stick it on a known board with a sensitive gyro that is susceptible to noisy ESCs. And if, you know, if, if, it, if, you know, if it keeps twitching, then obviously it's not very good. Because I have built one with that board believe it or not with the racer star 35 amp tattoo esc now i know i'm gonna get a lot of shit for this but i truly believe the racer star tattoo 35 amp 41 esc is better than this because i stuck it with that matic board it was beautiful it was my motor testing quad and that was the first quad i lost with my first gopro and I've been you losing my GoPros and my motor testing quads together always for some reason. Every time I build a motor testing quad, I, I fucking lose it. Uh, but I found this one, luckily, but the GoPro I still haven't found. So I, I'm still looking for it. Actually, every other day I go and just walk around like an idiot. But, um, I, I you know, all I'm trying to say is you can get better uh, for the same price. And, uh, yeah, that's really it. And I'm curious about all you guys' opinions and all you guys' thoughts and everything. Nice, mean whatever put it down below and uh i do read everything and um yeah i'm very interested but to be honest you know this is you know let me explain something to you when i first started i sat here and i told myself the way that i will work is for example right now if my brother said hey listen i have you know 50 dollars what, what esc should i buy you know i'm not gonna go tell my brother to buy a piece of shit i want you know because i want my brother to get you know what's really good what he can get best for his money and it's the same thing how i treat when i tell you guys it's like i'm advising my brother or a family member or a very very good friend not someone that i don't give a shit about i advise you from my current testing and what i've known over the past i could make small mistakes here and there but you know everybody makes it joshua bartle makes it uav future makes it but it will it's not intentional it's unintentional it's you know the data and right now i'm just really relying on the data in previous experience and um it's worked this far i've gotten a lot of thank you emails i've gotten a lot of things i've gotten a lot of nice comments and um that's just what keeps it going that's what i keep going i just want nice beautiful educated purchases and uh, because this stuff was all hidden before and now it's showing up and people disagree people agree and uh because you know before i had everything you test is the best everything you test is good well everything that i have been testing just been good so far and finally we get a couple things that are bad and everyone just goes absolutely nuts <laughs> which is pretty funny actually um i really like this and um yeah just let me know what you guys think i'm very curious and uh, i don't know what the hell's gonna happen with this video but i'll leave a link to everything down below and um an excel sheet with some of the things that i'd recommend at the current moment of time um if you want to go ahead and check it out this will keep uh, being updated um just some things you know budget and expensive you can go ahead and check them out here um these i've done a lot of testing except the speedyb right here i still haven't done a lot of testing but the board design looks very good the components used on board is very nice the price is very beautiful and it has a lot of awesome features and i've seen people already using them so they look pretty good especially the 9 volt regulator on board that's just a beauty 
it's an absolute beauty and well that's pretty much it guys so i really hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will see you next time see you guys take care